Hi, my name is Jason Hyman, Athletic Division Manager for Schmidt Athletic Floors. We're here looking at a gym floor. Talk about some things you can do as a school district in the event you have some dead spots. Um, the first thing I do, and you may not have these, but uh, it's really important as an installer or a company that does gym floors, is to, is to nail the floor incorrectly. Um, according to our association, you should install a floor 12 inches on center where your nail goes. And these magnets here, and you may have some in your school, can actually find where the nail schedule is. So in the event you have problems, you can run them along the board joint and try to decipher where the nail is. What you're trying to pick up, and one of the main culprits to a dead spot, is a system that was an older system that was like a sleeper or a two by four that would run perpendicular to maple. And what you could pick up with your magnet was basically rows of magnets, where they only are where the nail could go in through the wood. Um, in this particular gym, you're seeing that this is random, where there's not a specific nail pattern. Uh, we are seeing, and I just found one, this is clearly further than 12 inches apart. Um, that doesn't necessarily dictate 100% why you have dead spots, um, but what we're going to show you today is a couple of things you can try in the event you do. Um, so number one, if you can check your nail schedule, that would be great, uh, but you need some magnets. These are half inch spherical magnets. So what I have here is I have a drill, uh, 3 16 drill bit. Um, I have a can specifically of window and door great stuff, rather generic at your local hardware store. Do not buy the red expandable type, it has to be this type. Um, um, so that, that's what we're looking for. And then I also have an epoxy here that goes through a straw. This one here is 3M Scotch Weld. Um, we're going to try out a couple different things here. So I'm going to take our blue painter's tape and in a couple of spots, so let's say this is our dead spot area. Um, Let's say it was a sleeper system and I had rows of, of magnets that were here and here and here in a pattern. I wanna go right between those sleepers. Uh, in this particular case, this gym floor is a two layer of OSB installed about 27 or so years ago. And it's noted to probably be a first to second layer separation where the OSB is not separated, but there's a separation between the lower layer and the top layer. And kind of tell when you're pushing or deflecting the floor it almost has a clapping effect um, which is giving you that effect therein lies an installation consideration the first layer has to be nailed to the second layer appropriately and you have to have enough nails in the top to be able to, to, to bind both of those together but regardless we're in this position we want to try to see if we can fix um, the ultimate problem so what we have uh, what I'm going to do is essentially, and I actually need a different drill bit here to start this, so one second. I want to have the right drill bit, right size for this particular great stuff. I'm going to go right down the middle of a board, right down the middle of my tape, all the way to the subfloor. So I bottom out right there. Clean that off. I'm literally gonna take my great stuff and it's dirty here because I did one already. I'm gonna put it into that space and I'm gonna try to fill the void essentially that's under it. So what you can help or assist your project is to put some heavy weight on that area, maybe a couple of 45 pound dumbbells to hold down the section overnight. You can see it start to come back up there. Um, it might take a couple of hours for that to dry completely. You wanna pull the tape off and then put some wood filler in there. And that should help relieve yourself of a dead spot. You need to be concerned too, because there's also dead sounds. So in some of these floors, you'll hear dead sounds where it's not actually a dead spot. This will actually accomplish both. Um, so that, that's one option. The second option is the epoxy. So what we're gonna do in this particular case, we have three quarter inch maple, which is pretty common on here. And then we have a half inch layer of, of um, OSB as the top layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this drill bit and I'm gonna mark it so I'm down the three quarter plus a half inch plus a nominal addition. So I'm slightly into that bottom layer. I'm just gonna take a drill hole right through both. 
and my goal or intent here is that this epoxy, as it mixes through this straw, is going to find its way to the bottom layer, squeeze back up between the bottom and, 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 and the top layer of, of OSB, and then come back up and squeeze anything remaining between the maple and the top layer. And um, we can do that by showing right here. Squeeze that into the area. Don't want to overdo it either. It's a little bit subjective on how much you use, but several squeezes there. So we let that dry. Maybe this area here as it's, as it's dry and we, we clean off as we go. We pull the tape, wait overnight, put some wood filler in it, and we're done.